Hello, my name is Michael D. Uh, welcome to Garbusian Gallery. Uh, this is the Some Candy Talking and the Sound of Speed exhibition. But it's actually two exhibitions. There are forces pushing each against each other. We have polystyrene sculptures that are saccharine sweet and very pop. And then we also have a second body of work that is more dealing with extreme sound, uh, sonic booms, gunshots, and uh, very high temperature. So I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, the work was inspired uh, directly by releases by the Scottish band Jesus and Mary Chain and to have the outside of the gallery candy coated with these uh, super sweet confection sculptures. But the inside of the gallery, I wanted to reference uh, male aggression, very loud uh, noises. I wanted to reference machismo paths. And I wanted to reference a dialogue between the artwork because you can't melt someone's face unless you have extreme distortion. You can't have orifices unless you have something to penetrate them. And you can't have these planes breaking the sound barrier unless you have references to other super fuzzy sounds. Okay? Uh, the plastic sculptures are actually made from cups that are readily available at Party City. Is, uh, I always try to use things that are accessible because I want you know, small children to like my work, I want regular people to like my work, art world people, and, you know, people who are familiar with the original pop artists from the 60s too. Um, these have a kind of vacuum form quality and they have a ribbing so a lot of people associate them with uh, you know, sexual organs because you have this kind of lip shape on the end and then you have more of a head shape here. I started making these um, in the hopes that they would be used in store displays or in the hopes that they would be in like public gardens because I thought that they had an alien quality as well as looking like minimalist sculpture, but they also had a kind of surreal, freakish creature quality that I thought would contrast well in an environment where instead of having something being completely geometric, these kind of had a different materiality because there's nothing here except the cup, so it's actually kind of like a shell. And with the glowing light box, some of the sculptures actually project the light like a video projector lens and you can get with an intense spotlight very large shadows that look like octopuses or squids. So I, when I was making these I did, I did want to have something organic to contrast my previous work where everything was objects creating video interference or blasting warnings, but now it's a three-dimensional object rather than a video projection. If you party in Los Angeles around Halloween, you probably see these a lot. Uh, this is a crystal head bug, a bottle that you can buy at any local liquor store. Just put it on my drawing table and then I shine a high intensity white LED light and then I actually invert the photos in Photoshop so then the bright super intense white light becomes black. And I thought that it looked like concentrated evil was uh, dripping out of the skull in the form of a beautiful ink wash or a watercolor. Uh, this group here is kind of a triptych. You have uh, the Paps Blue Ribbon Can from uh, Dennis Hopper in Blue Velvet. And I thought 
the only way to make it more intense and manly was to shoot it like you do when you maybe you go out in the wilderness or out to a farm with your father and you know, start learn how to use a gun and hanging out. Uh, the second picture is a St. John's wort flower and those actually have a dialogue with the bullets we'll look at shortly. But the third picture is actually one that I'm really interested in because uh, it's a cube of police gelatin that I manipulated in Photoshop to actually turn into a uh, quite nice, um, I guess, tribute to an abstract painting. I like that because I think it has a good rhythm and I like the, uh, the flow from left to right. The jacketed hollow points are actually objects that begin shaped like this and then upon collision they actually open up and bloom like a flower and I was very interested in this because I mean, they actually enter something and then they actually transform into another type of object. Um, the St. John's wort flowers kind of are the glue that kind of ties the whole show together. Um, in my experience, I, I had an incident where I actually went into anaphylactic shock after drinking some tea that had a St. John's wort in it. And then that kind of became a reminder of death and that related to the skulls and the flowers, the way they bloom, also related to the sound elements in the show. And formally, I really like the way they look like a firework and they look like a large gold sculpture. And when I look at the flowers now, I kind of uh, see them as having also a discourse with the bullets with the jacketed hollow point bullets because the jacketed hollow point bullets are kind of like a negative space or an orifice and the St. John's wort flowers are actually the flowers that have more of a phallic feel to them. Um, this series is the uh, Transonic Jet series. Uh, the planes are all U.S. military aircraft that are breaking the sound barrier. I, I've always uh, had an interest in aircraft. My father's actually an aircraft inspector. And I, just from the time I was a small child, I was always drawing airplanes, going to the airport, going to air shows. But I kind of forgot about this for a while. And then I was in Williamsburg, Brooklyn when I, when I was in New York. And I heard this tremendously large, bassy, very loud sound. And what it was, what it, it was a sonic boom. And what I tried to do was uh, capture that moment just when the plane's going transonic. And these are graphite drawings. And to contrast the kind of clean, geometric, steel and glass of the airplane. I used ebony, which has a very soft, kind of warmer brown quality to it for the backgrounds. And as far as the sound of the sonic boom, that bass was just such, had such a sub quality and such a, pre such a presence that I remembered that. And then only recently, as kind of the experimental punk music and the extreme metal music had that sound because now uh, they make fuzz pedals, distortion pedals, and tube overdrives that can actually recreate that sort of uh, bassy, like gut punching, enormous sound. This is a Philips vacuum tube uh, used in uh, guitar amps from the very, very late 50s and the early and mid 60s. They actually do not make these tubes anymore, but they're associated with great tone and a great overdrive. 
and I wanted to capture it, so I did a drawing from a macro photo, and you can actually see the structure of the inside of the tube. I made it the same size as a human head, because I know, you know some guys talk about their cars and stuff, and some guys talk about their music equipment. Um, what is actually going on with all the work in the interior of the gallery you have a performative aspect where if you were trying to produce the bloom of the flowers or the bloom of the bullets, you could use the EL503 tube. If you are trying to produce the jet plane noise or the gunshot sounds, you could use the fuzzerocious rat tail pedal. You do a little demo of that real quick. are using an extreme distortion or overdrive pedal, you are melting a face. And it was made to tie in with the show and to tie in with the sounds that the Jesus and Mary chain made. And I needed to have a melted face. When I actually hooked this up, they would melt a face and create a sculpture because the person would make the melted face face. So we burned a face into a sheet of aluminum with an oxyacetylene torch with a drawing tip. <laughs> 